This is the K95.3 Sports Show Podcast, brought to you by The Fan Zone in Wilmer's Candy Mall. Welcome to the K95.3 Sports Show Podcast. My name is Bo Stamfus. I am your host. As usual, if you like what you hear, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up button on this video if you like this particular one yourself. And also, if you hit next to the subscribe button, there is a bell. If you hit that, that'll give you push notifications on your cell phone every time a new episode comes out every Wednesday. Also, like to thank uh, the Fan Zone for sponsoring the podcast. Once again, get inside the Candy Mall and check them out today. Uh, also, um, I, I'm on Twitter. Make sure you check me out at K953Sports Show. That's at K953Sports Show on Twitter. I'm usually on there talking, uh, talking during Twins games, commenting other sports things throughout the week. Maybe we can go back and forth on there a little bit. Also, um, we'll be checking out uh, later in the show. We'll be having the uh, Stinger Spotlight coming up, and uh, at at the end of the show. And so, make sure you check that out. Uh, but I am off this week um, on a little vacation, so I'm kind of doing what we're calling uh, just the interviews. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, the Brandon Zilstra interview, the very first one he had with me. Uh, then we're going to go right into the Jack Morris uh, interview, and then we're going to finish with the Latroy Hawkins interview. Then, like I said, we'll go into the uh, Stinger Spotlight after all three of those interviews. So it's a show full of interviews while I'm on vacation. Uh, so please sit back and enjoy, and uh, here's the Brandon Zilstra interview. On the phone right now, we have NLS's own Minnesota Vikings number 15, Brandon Zilstra. Thanks for taking time and talking with me today, Brandon. Yeah, you bet, Bo. Um, as a lifetime diehard Vikings fan, it's amazing having a local guy playing for the Purple and growing up here in Candiwai County, what were some of your favorite things to do growing up? Um, I was definitely a guy that was on the lake every day as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, whether it's just fishing, um, literally just chilling with friends, taking tubes, floating across the lake. Um, water skiing is a huge passion of mine. But just anything oh, nice. involving the lake, um, you know, that's what I did just yeah. about every day. Yeah, that's kind of kind of second nature uh, growing up in the Spicer New London area, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Live on the lake. <laughs> Too many legs. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, you know, you know, gro- going from the NLS to Concordia to uh, the CFL to the NFL, is there a certain coach or person that you credit for helping you get to this point in your career? Uh, there's countless people. Um, you know, every, after every football season, I always go back and just kind of reflect, you know, on my past years and just, you know, think about how far I've come and uh, everybody that's kind of helped me because, you know, I obviously haven't made it here alone. Mm-hmm. You know, I have numerous guys to thank, and um, I like to I like to let those people know too. Um, you know, the coaches back from Concordia, I'll give them a text, and you know, I keep up with them pretty regularly. Um, there's one coach in the CFL, uh, actually two coaches that I keep up with, um, but you know, countless friends and family. Like there's there's a, there's too many people. Too too many people to name. Well, that's good. You got a good <laughs> you got a good base. To, to, to help you out that's that's awesome and and you mentioned the cfl and i'm not gonna lie i don't follow or know much about the cfl um you know are the canadian fans um as passionate about football like we are down here in the states i mean what what's the vibe up there compared to, to here in in the u.s yeah so you know they definitely love their football um the thing that's unique about them is they have the cfl but you know they watch all the nfl games too mm. so they kind of have you know more football um, that's a good versus point you know, people in the states they don't really know too much about the CFL, so they're not really exposed to that. So they only get the, you know, the Sunday, Monday, and Thursday games. Well, yeah, up in the CFL you get, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday sometimes. So oh wow. Um, but they they're definitely passionate. Um, they love both the CFL and NFL. Um, the fans the fans up there are great. I still have guys um, fans reach out to me on my social medias all the time, just you know thanking thanking me for you know playing out there and. Um, just wishing me luck down here. Um, you know, they've been great. Awesome. And what is your uh, what is your social media, by the way? Go ahead and plug that if you want for uh, uh, local. Just just really my Instagram. That's the only one I really oh, use. Your Inst- okay, I didn't know if you were on Twitter or not. <laughs> uh, I mean, I have Twitter. I, don't, I really don't use it too much. I okay. kind of use that to retweet some stuff. But yeah. uh, yeah, Instagram is really the only okay. thing I kind of keep up with. That works. That works. So obviously, uh, you know, Vikings gave uh, signed you and brought you into camp and everything. Now. You know, tell me one thing that surprised you about the NFL when you got into it. Um, you know, I expected it 
the, the competition level to be there, and that's something I was really looking forward to because I thrive off competition. You know, that's it really elevates my game. Just and you know, when you get here, it's everybody. Everybody wants to be great. Everybody has these goals and dreams, and yep. you know, everybody's just competing at the highest level. And that's something that I love. Um, but yeah, something that I guess struck me a little bit is just the physicality. Mm -hmm. um, as far as like DBs getting away with, you know, their jams and their hands, um, it's a lot more physical than uh, the college and the CFL game. Um, they're kind of able to reroute you a little bit more and grab you a little bit, and things aren't really called as much. Um, mm -hmm. Even and, with even with all the penalties and or the way that the league has kind of hamstrung a lot of the cornerbacks, it's still it's still more aggressive <laughs> well, than I mean, CFL. That, that's that's the thing is I've only played in what two preseason games as a receiver. True. Um, I haven't got too much during the regular season, so it's it's still kind of hard to tell um, yep. to make like a fair judgment about it. Um, I'm just kind of going by what we do in practice, and you know we have refs out there too, but you know they're not really calling too much. Yeah, yeah. They um, so I, I'm still I'm still learning. You know what I can get away with, as well as what they can get away with. Nice, nice. And you and you mentioned, you know, you haven't uh, really lined up as receiver, but you've been uh, during the regular season. But you've been uh, doing special teams. Um, of course, you had your your big nine yard punt return uh, <laughs> <laughs> on that short one. Did you did you keep the ball or did you give it back? No, I gave that back. Oh, I got I got way bigger plans than just well, a yeah, nine yard punt return. <laughs> but your first time touching the of uh, the NFL the game playing the ball, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> I, I, I got I got bigger plans. I'll, I'll wait till I get that first touchdown. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There Keep you go. That ball. Perfect, perfect. And you know, uh, with the craziness of the uh, NFL schedule, you know, you've got the meetings, you got practice, lifting, talking with rubes like me. What do you enjoy doing during your downtime? Um, honestly, I just like to, there, there will be times during the week, you know, I'm going from 6 a.m. to, you know, 6 p.m. So when I get home, I just like to honestly just like sit down and just do nothing for a little bit. Uh, really just relax. Um, because, you know, you don't get too much free time. Yeah. Um, but you know, if I'm like on our bye week or something like that, I'm, I'm a big bowler. I always take my oh, youngest brother, Jaden, bowling. Whenever I go home, I always do that. Um, I haven't been doing that too much up here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But that's something I like to do in the past time. Okay, nice. Were you ever a big Madden player at all gr growing up? Uh, I was never too much into video games oh. in general. I just I always spent my time outside. Okay, nice. Um, yeah. Nice, nice. I was going to ask you if, you, if you've played yourself in Madden yet. That'd be like <laughs> I haven't, but I've had some friends tell me that they've used me and uh, got me a little bit better. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would have been one of the first things I would have done if I <laughs> go in there. And, and uh, yeah, that would have been <laughs> – that definitely would have been one of my first things I would have done. But, uh, you know, you know uh, I've been doing this podcast now for just under two months, um, and I appreciate you joining me and everything. And w since the beginning of the of the podcast – Every new person that I bring on the podcast, I ask them one uh, one question, and I would love to get your input on it. I ask each person who they would put on their Vikings Mount Rushmore of Vikings player players. Mount Rushmore. So yes, we're, you we're got talking four four people that are the best in the Vikings history. Who not who, not my favorite. It, however, you want to do it. I have people who do their favorites. I have people who are only pick players that were around when they've been alive. You know, however you want. It's your Mount Rushmore. You put four Vikings players on there. Who do you got? Okay. Well, Nick number one is Randy Moss, hands down. You know, that's that's yep. why I'm a receiver today. Um, I grew up watching him and idolizing him. Yes. Um, two, I'm going to go the guy that was throwing him all those long ball touchdowns and Dante Culpepper. Ooh, Dante. Because um, I, I just love watching him and how he dropped back. You see him drop his shoulder, and you knew it was going 70 yards <laughs> down the field to – Randy Moss, and that's well, something I always look forward to well, on Sunday. So. Got goosebumps when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm going to put those two together. Um, another running back that I grew up watching, and I always thought he was so underrated, and it always made me mad that he didn't get enough um, love out there in the media and stuff, was Robert Smith. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that he gave you know, he gave up football so early. When yeah. I always felt like, and that always kind of made me mad, too, because I know that he had so much left in him, but you know, I, I don't know the whole backstory behind it, but... Um, he he was somebody that I loved watching, um, Robert Smith. Yes. Um, then your fourth. My fourth. Yes. It's my fourth is actually two people, but they're <laughs> together as one. It's the Williams Wall, Pat, uh, Pat and Kevin Williams. Yes. Just cause they 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 go one and two hand in hand. So I'll I'll accept it. I'll accept it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. That's a that's a great list. Uh, you know, you mentioned Moss, of course. Yes, I hundred percent agree with you. Um, I had Moss. Um, also on it, I had Moss, Carter, Tarkington, and Page. That's okay. what I did. I even though 
I was born in 1980, and I never saw Tarkenton and Page play. You know, I, I gave so you know their greatness. Yeah, exactly. I, I I have eyes, and I've seen video. <laughs> well, I'm I, I'm 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 putting Marcus Sherrill in my honorary mention. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> he's 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 the crazy horse that's down the road from uh, I, I love <laughs> from Mount Sherrill, Rushmore. So. Yeah, no, I, I do too, man. He's a gamer, and that's I've I've always enjoyed watching him play. And yeah, good, great job. Yeah, with Moss, I you know when him going into the Hall of Fame this year, you know there was all the highlights of him all over Facebook and all over social media. And I just rewatched them. I rewatched it probably dozens of times. And it, I'm right there with you. And, and, and you, you, and I had forgotten how beautiful and graceful and great everything and was. Just how dominant he was. Oh. And he could take control of a game and, you know, he, he exploited his confidence. He wasn't afraid to show it and tell people about it. And that's, yep. that's just something I respect from him so much. He, he wouldn't back down to anybody. Yep. He wasn't afraid of any kind of challenge. Yeah, yeah, and 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 now he's in a now he's on ESPN, and uh, I mean I didn't see him going to that direction, but you know, he's, <laughs> he's doing he's, great with it. Yeah, though. yeah, he is. He is actually one of my favorites to to listen to, and I respect his opinion. But uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's I, I appreciate uh, you joining me today, and you know, thanks for talking with me, Brandon. Uh, but before I let you go, I was wondering, you know, if you would be uh, interested in joining me possibly once a month while the season's going on, just to kind of keep the uh, hometown fans up to date with your NFL career. Cause I know people around the area are closely following you. I see Zilstra shirts all over the place. I hear people talking about it. People that aren't even football fans talking about you. Is that something you might be interested in doing and kind of helping out with the uh, local fans listening? Yeah, I, I got no problem with that. Awesome. Awesome, man. Well, I will let you go because it sounds like uh, you got to get going to some meetings. So yep. uh, I'll let you go. And, and thank you so much again for meeting me and talking with me, Brandon, and I look forward to uh, future conversations. Yeah, you bet, Bo. Hey, thanks, Brandon. Have a, have a great uh, game this Sunday. All right, thank you. Thank you. Well, that was my first interview with Brandon Zilstra. Um, I had two other ones if you want to catch the other ones, including a 30-minute long one where he came in studio during their bye week last year. Uh, go Scroll back through the videos, and you can find those other two interviews with him. Up next is Jack Morris. I was lucky to sit down and talk with him when he was here with the Twins Caravan for a short little interview. So uh, here's Jack Morris. All right, Jack. A few questions here for you. Is, uh, is there a pitcher in the minors or just starting with the Twins that you really like? You know, I don't really have a real good grasp of all the minor leaguers the Twins have right now. I haven't really done anything with the Twins uh, at, with respect to the minor leagues, so I guess I'm naive on that. Um, but there's a lot of young guys in the big leagues, and, you know, I'm excited about the whole staff. Uh, you know, ultimately, it's not going to be one guy that carries them, so... You know, I'm, I'm excited about spring training and getting the guys ready and, and see what can happen. Yeah, that's that's what I've always liked about baseball is there seems to be, you know, when you get to spring training, there's, these, there's good enough parity that, you know, teams can surprise and players can turn around things and become a better career quickly. Yeah, exactly. They're, uh, you know, it's their opportunity now, and that's what's kind of wonderful and, and about baseball is when there's turnover and guys leave, there's other opportunities for somebody else to take their job. Go ahead and uh, bring you back. Got just one question from 91 in here. How relieved were you when Larkin singled in Gladden so you didn't have to go out and pitch another inning? Well, I was hoping we'd get one run, and yeah. we finally did. You know? <laughs> I was teasing the boys. I said, you know, tonight I only need one. I usually eat 10, yeah, yeah. but tonight I only need one. <laughs> nice. how, how many innings were you willing to go? Were you done after oh, that? or I, I had more left. It was, uh, you know, it's kind of foolish to even try to talk about it but I I wasn't done yet and uh, it was an adrenaline night the season was going to come to an end that night and I had a couple months to rest for the next start so I wasn't worried about how many innings I was going to throw nice nice yeah I was 11 I was 11 when you guys won it remember it like it was yesterday it was it was a great time um what uh when you look back on your hall of fame career who were some of your favorite guys to play with I had, you know, so many great teammates, and some of them are in the Hall of Fame right now. Uh, you know, some hopefully down the road will make it. But, you know, that's the thing. I was so lucky. I won champion, world championships on three different teams uh, four different times. So uh, it's pretty cool to be a part of it, certainly in Minnesota. You know, Puck was a... Uh, he was the guy on our team. He talked all the smack and, and then backed it up. Uh, but we had a lot of other guys that 
you know, made it fun. Shirley Davis was a phenomenal uh, addition in 91. And he helped uh, motivate a lot of guys. Scotty Erickson, Kevin Tapney had great years with us. And Rick Aguilera in the bullpen. Uh, you know, we just, we were well-rounded and we had a lot of reasons why we won. Yeah. A true, a true team. You guys were a great team. You know, you yeah. you had a few top superstars, but it was a great, well-rounded team. Yeah, I played 18 years in big leagues, and uh, 91 was probably the most fun group I ever played with because it, it the trash talk started at about three o'clock, and it didn't stop until <laughs> game time. Uh, and we had more fun together, and I think that was what made us special. And why we came together as a team is because. We just had a lot of characters that just uh, really, really enjoyed uh, teasing each other and, and, and laughing with, with, with each other and, and about ourselves. Yeah, no, it's, I just saw a meme on Facebook the other day. It says, uh, you're not my friend unless I insult you on day, every day. <laughs> you know, just picking on people and, and having, giving that rubbing, giving that, you know, uh, getting that uh, togetherness of the team. And so, yeah, that's, I understand what you're talking with that. Uh, you know, what, what coach uh, helped you the most in your career? Is there a certain one that, you know, maybe high school to college to, or, I mean, to the majors, is there one that really helped you the most? Or Well, if I'm going to be honest about that, as far as professional baseball, you know, I was with Sparky the longest, Sparky Anderson, and, you know, it took us a while to figure out how to win at the big league. Sparky was certainly an integral part of that, and, and when we finally won in 84 uh, in postseason again in 87, uh, Sparky was right at the helm of that, so... I give him a lot of credit. Nice, nice. All right, last one. So uh, I started this podcast back in August, and it's been a lot of Vikings talk. And I had a question I asked everybody who came in. I asked for their Vikings Mount Rushmore players, who they would put on players of the Vikings Mount Rushmore. Who would you put on your Twins Mount Rushmore of players? Four players, any era of Twins baseball, four heads. Who would you put on there? I, you know, Harmon would be the main guy. You know, he'd be the George Washington. Yep, there you go. Um, Puckett would have to be up there. Um, and I, I might just put uh, Jim Cott, Tony Oliva. Those are two of my favorite guys. I, I'm pulling for both of those to make the Hall of Fame, and hopefully. Uh, that'll happen soon. I think they deserve it, and you know we'll see how it works out. Yeah, nice. nice. Well, well, thank, thank you, Jack. I appreciate you taking the time and interviewing with me today. I appreciate everything, and thanks again for the 91 memories. I appreciate it. You got it, man. Thank awesome. you. All right. Thanks. Super cool listening to Jack Morris and to interview a Hall of Famer like that. Uh, super lucky to be put in that position. Uh, so, uh, like I said, great interview. And coming up now, uh, next is the Latroy Hawkins one. This is the newest one. Uh, he was in town, if you recall, some of you, uh, for the Wilmer Stingers opener. He threw out the first pitch, and he was nice enough to come here and talk to me in studio for an interview. So here's the Latroy Hawkins interview. Hey everyone, I'm here now with uh, Latroy Hawkins. He's nice enough to come in and sit down and talk with me while he's in town for the uh, Stingers uh, season opener tonight on Wednesday. Uh, so I appreciate you coming in and taking a few minutes. Oh, happy to be here in Thank Wilmer. You. Yes, there we go. <laughs> uh, you know, before we really get into uh, other questions, uh, let's just talk about the Twins. This year. How fun is it watching the Twins play this year? Well, it's <laughs> it's always fun to watch a winner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <that's> true. <laughs> and I love my Minnesota Soda fans, and and they love a winner, and they showed that this past week when they came out in droves, but. You know, just a lot of things going right. Last year, a lot of things went wrong, a lot of injuries. Mm -hmm. You know, people talk about, oh, we were terrible. No, we wasn't terrible. We were snake bitten by a lot of injuries, and, and we just wasn't able to recover. This year, we've been pretty much injury-free, and that helps. And the, the couple injuries that we have had, we've had guys to step in for those guys that are on an injured list, and we hadn't missed a beat. Yep. So I think that was, that's the key. But it's definitely fun to watch a winner. Uh, the guys are playing great. They're swinging the bat well. We're playing defense like we always do. We're pitching well. Um, but we all know that baseball is a long season, 162-plus mm -hmm. games. Um, and I don't think the Cleveland Indians are going to lay down. I think they're going to be – they're going to make a push, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, withstand that, that push that they're going to have and, and win our division. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, you know, as, as, as a – Born and raised here in Minnesota, you know, there's there's a lot of a lot of fans out there just like, oh, wait for the bottom to fall, wait for the bottom. I'm like, why are you guys being so negative? Sit and enjoy this. You yeah. know what I mean? You you don't you know, even if it does end up falling off eventually, it's just sit and enjoy this because we aren't we haven't been accustomed to this 
and especially with the home run side. Oh well, yeah, for Twins, fans. that's true. But people forget two years ago we played in the playing game. Yep. Yep. Two years ago. Yep. But I think I think humans in general we're just people who love to want to have something to be upset about. Yeah, you know, yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> we always think the worst and never look for the positive in, in any situation. That's just part of our human nature. And yep. you know what? Just you know, I would tell those fans just you know you can keep thinking like that and talking like that, and the guys will keep going out getting W's. Exactly. That's that's great. So you know, like I said, you you know. You, you had a 21-year career, which right there is just amazing. I mean, you don't hear about that all the time. So, you know, I was looking through your stats throughout the years, and I, and I, I pinpointed your last season with us, 2003, as probably your best overall season uh, that you had. You, uh, you were 9-3, and 1.86 ERA, 75 Ks and 77 innings, only 15 walks. You know, you know I've always kind of wondered, you know, when, when – when pitching during the season or any se- other season that is going well like that, is it is it difficult to not get wrapped up in your stats and how well it's going, or do, do, does that just not even cross your mind? I might all? be just a handf- one of, of a handful of athletes that I never looked at my stats during the season. Oh, wow, never. That'd be difficult. I <laughs> never looked at my stats. I knew how I was doing. I didn't. Need oh, yeah. the, I didn't need yeah. the the, the uh, <laughs> stat sheet to to. Um, validate what I was doing. I knew how I was doing. Yeah. I knew it. I never looked at stat sheet. Never, ever. Mm-hmm. My 25 years in the game, maybe in the minor leagues, but when I got to the big leagues, I never looked hmm. at the stat sheet. Maybe because I probably looked at it early on and it was so bad. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to look at that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, obviously, you know, I, I actually was, uh, I, no- I noticed that you have been helping out with the Twins broadcast. I watched the uh, Seattle and uh, Angels series, and I heard you talking on there. And uh, first I th- first off, I think you've done a good job. I, I, I like what the Twins are doing, having kind of the rotation. and, and Having a mixture. Yep, yes. and having the past players coming back. I really like what they're doing. I thought uh, Morneau is also very good at, mm-hmm. at it, too. It's, it's been fun to listen to and watch. And, uh, you know, uh, last week when you were in Seattle, uh, you mentioned um, uh, a story about Griffey Jr., on on air one i huge yeah i don't i've never really followed baseball really hardcore so outside of the twins growing up but griffey was my griffey was my boy i loved griffey um besides pocket of course and uh but griffey was my outside of twins guy but uh you talked about him pulling you aside or something giving you pointers uh would you mind kind of retelling that story a little bit for for my listeners it was early in my career when i was i was starting in you know the late 90s and i started against seattle and I think I had two strikes on Griffey, and I threw him a changeup. And my changeup was probably my third or fourth best pitch. And he hit it for a home run. And it was early in the game. I was taken out of the game. And at the old Metrodome, the clubhouses were right by side by side. And the only thing separated the clubhouse was a laundry room and a little small, like, bat room. Okay. That was it. So it was, like, less than – a five yard di- distance between the clubhouses. And I was up in the clubhouse and the visiting clubby, Troy Machen came and got me and said, Hey, Griffey wants, wants to see you want to talk to you. I'm like, Griffey, <laughs> really? You just took me deep <laughs> in the upper tank. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, he want to, he want to talk to you. So I go in there and he was like, Hey man, listen, he was like, why would you throw me a change up in that situation? You had me two strikes, and I hadn't even took a good swing at your fastball, and then you gave me a, you gave me an out. You gave me an opportunity to be able to put a good swing on your third or fourth best pitch. And he was like, your fastball is good enough. And now, granted, I was young and taking this from Griffey. I knew who he was. I was a, I'm still a Griffey fan, and yep. I was a bigger fan back then. And <laughs> as a baseball player, I'm, I know him personally now, so I'm, I'm more of a fan of the person than the human being he is. But – I'm like, he's trying to set me up. He's trying to set me up for failure. <laughs> this is what he's doing. He's trying to set me up for failure. For failure. But you know what? He told me that, and from that moment, I think it changed my career. I mean, it took me a while to completely understand what he was, what he was telling me, that my fastball was, was um, enough. Mm-hmm. Like, I had a really good fastball. And once I understood that, it changed my career. It changed nice. my career because I think – when it was all said and done, I probably threw 72, 73% fastball. So every seven out of 10 pitches is going to be a fastball. So you knew what you're going to get. Whether you hit it or not, that was on you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, that's awesome. Yeah, no, I, I loved that story, and I wanted to make sure our listeners heard that who, who might not have caught it during the game. Um, you know, uh, before those series, had you ever done TV Color Man before? No. Uh, when I retired in 2000, October 2015, I was just going to stay home in 2016. I didn't want to travel, do anything, right. and just 21 I've been, years of traveling. I've been on the road a long all the time. Years of that. Well, a company called TuneIn Radio. Mm, yep. TuneIn is uh, they have an app, and you can listen to podcasts and audiobooks and all the sports you want for free. Yep. Well, they were they were doing a um, they doing a new baseball show, mm. and <clears throat> got a call and they asked me if I wanted to do it, and I'm like, I don't know. He was like, Well, you can do it from your house, and I was like, Whoa. You can do it from my house. <laughs> now my my antennas went up. I'm yeah, like, oh, yeah. I can do radio and watch games and enjoy watching the games and do it from the own comfort of my office. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No All right. Not. So I did that. I did it probably about I probably did about seventy five games. Uh, my producer was in L A. and my co host was in right outside of D C. at the time. Holden Kushner. He's um he's uh on the radio in Denver now, and set it up and we watched all 15 major league games on a good night and we talked about each game we were, we were um bounced back and forth between the games say if you had a 10 game hit streak when you came to hit we would go to your game and hmm. if some guy was throwing a no hitter cool. get the no hitter watch we'd go watch him so we were bouncing around the league interesting and it was fun i did that 75 games i would um they started started at six and we were done at 11 so it was five hours a night hmm. um I would take a nap at 1. I would take a nap at 3, wake up at 5, shower, put on my pajamas, <laughs> go, in the, go in the office, cut all my equipment on, and do the game. 11 o'clock, shut everything down, go get in the bed, and yeah, go to nice, sleep. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> rough days. Rough, rough days. days. Yeah. Tune in radio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, um, uh, obviously, uh, you've, so you've enjoyed, did you enjoy the, the Seattle and the LA thing? Did you enjoy doing it on TV and stuff like that? Oh, yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, you, you're in the rotation then throughout yeah, the season type of thing? Yeah, I won't be back on until the end of July when the Twins are in Chicago playing the White Sox. Okay. And then I'm not on again until the last homestand. I'll have that home, whole last homestand here oh, in nice. Minneapolis. Okay. So I'm doing 18 games this year. The last two years I did 12 apiece. But this year, I bumped it up six games. Okay, nice. And who knows? Maybe more next year. We'll see. But yeah. I think 18 right now is is enough. I got – like, you. people think it's easy, but oh, yeah. as you know, it's oh, not yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, <laughs> you have to be a real talker mm-hmm. to be able to get through a whole game of talking about the – you have to be a talker. Yep. And it's just I'm, – I'm a talker, but I'm not I'm – not, I have to build up my endurance for that Yeah. because yeah. I get tired probably about – the third game in, yeah, yeah. so I had to do seven. I was exhausted yeah. by day five. <laughs> I was exhausted. Well, then, well, you had a little gift because the Angels game was was rained out, and then you you didn't do the last game of the Angels game, right? No, I didn't. But that Wednesday, we still went to the ballpark. Oh, we still prep. Yeah. We still did pregame because you're like, hey, it's it's LA, and there's no way there's gonna be a rain out. We did everything <laughs> but call the game. That was it. And only and I didn't get a chance to call the game on Saturday because I mean on that Thursday because my daughter was graduating from mm. high school. Oh, awesome. Yep. Awesome. How many kids do you have? Only have one. Only one. Nice. A daughter. She's 17. She's attending Concordia University in Irvine, California. Oh, nice. Yep. Nice. Well, congratulations on that on her and uh what's she going into? Uh theater, theater oh. major nice. and minor in um sports marketing. Oh, okay. Nice. Yep. Awesome. Well, good for her. I wish her luck. Um uh, get a little thing here uh, for your favorite and least favorite player to go up against. Hmm. My <laughs> favorite. Is there just one, like maybe one good player that you just dominated, or or an old buddy of yours that you? Yeah, like I dominated show up? Matt Holiday. Oh. And guy that I hated to go up against was Harold Baines. Harold Baines. Harold killed me. Harold Baines and Edgar Martinez. Two Hall of Famers, might I add. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> so good reason not to be as good against them. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, obviously Minnesota is your favorite place to play, to have played, of course, obviously, right? You know what I had? <laughs> with the 11 teams, Minnesota is definitely number one on my list, and that's the place I first made it to the major leagues, the team that drafted me out of high school. But I played in some really cool places and 11 different cities. Yeah, and what would be your second? What was another place that you had? You know what? I think I got three cities that are right th- at second. I don't have a third and fourth. They all tied. I got yeah. uh, Milwaukee, mm. Denver, mm. and Toronto, mm. Minnesota, and then those three. Nice. And they're all tied at second because 
and I really enjoyed. I enjoyed Milwaukee because it had a lot of you know the Minneapolis, Minnesota feel yep. for the people. Yep, the Midwestern and Colorado is just a just one of those places of super clean and people are nice and everybody's outdoorsy and I like playing in Denver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then Toronto is the place I spent you know my last you know ninety five days in professional baseball as a player. And that city was on rocking because we won the American League East that mm. year. They were winning, and it was just, you know, when I got traded at the deadline on in 15, I got a tweet before I landed in Toronto the next day, and a guy had tweeted me and said, hey, we're going we're gonna to show you how it feels to have a whole country rooting for you, not just a oh, city. Right. <laughs> and when I read it, I'm like, oh, whatever. I'm like, oh, oh. That makes sense. Yeah. It's the only baseball team in the country. Yeah. Well, big league team, major league team. Yeah. I'm like after the Expos left. Okay. I'm well. like, all right, that's pretty that's pretty darn cool. Yeah, well that's cool. Awesome. Awesome. Well, when I started this podcast back in, in August during the Viking season, I had uh, every new person who came in on my podcast, I have had them give me their Mount Rushmore of Vikings players. Well, obviously, you're and what or actually and when I, I interviewed Jack Morris when he was here in town and obviously I tweaked it a little bit. What would be your Mount Rushmore of twins players? Four players up on the mountain. Curry Puckett. Ooh. Doesn't have to be necessarily the greatest of all time. It's who you personally. Who I personally. Who you Curry personally. Curry Puckett. I would also have to go Scott Erickson. Nice. Um, myself. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and Eddie Guardado. Ah, Eddie. Nice. Yeah. That's a good four. Everyday Eddie. That's a good four. I like it. I like and if it. If I can't use myself, I would have to go with Christian Guzman. Ah, nice. Ah. It's it's nice to look back on those on the teams from the early two thousands, late nineties and just be like, oh, I forgot about that person. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or I forgot they were on our team. Cavid, Luis Rivas, yep. Matt LaCroix. Nice. Nice. Great Mount Rushmore for that. Uh, now we'll get into the rapid question segment. I'll be doing this every week with our Stinger players and coaches that come in. Um, so it's just going to be some quick questions. One, two, three answers, or three word answers will work just fine. Um, so we'll start off with uh, favorite color. Red. Favorite MLB club? Minnesota. One thing you can't live without? Wearing a watch. Favorite thing to do in your downtime? Relax. Favorite all-time baseball player? Jackie Robinson. The one food you can never get sick of? Beans and rice. Beans and rice. Favorite TV show of all time? Of all time? Yep, your favorite show. <laughs> Saved by the Bell. Saved by the Bell. Nice. <laughs> favorite movie of all time? Harlem Nights. If you weren't... No, no, oh. I'll take that back. Remember the Titan. Ah, nice. Uh, if you weren't involved in baseball, what would you want to be doing? If I hadn't been a baseball player, I would be a physical therapist. Hmm, nice. Ford or Chevy? Ford. I drive a F-250. Ford is the best in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I'll agree with you on that one. PlayStation or Xbox? Neither. Neither. Don't play games. Don't play games, okay? I got kicked out of recess, yeah. off of recess, because I didn't like to play games. <laughs> <laughs> Burger King or McDonald's? Neither. Neither. Not a fast food? N well, I like some fast food. I'll go with Jack in the Box there or go. Whataburger in Texas. Yeah, there you go. Uh, smell you hate the most? The smell I hate the most. <laughs> I can't say nothing ridiculous. Like, oh, you smell it that often that you hate it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, any kind of perfume when I have a sign when my sinuses is acting oh, up. Oh, <laughs> I hear you. I any hear, kind of perfume. I hear you. <laughs> smell you love the most. Vanilla. Vanilla. I oh, love vanilla. Nice. Superhero power you'd want. Don't like superheroes. No, no. Nope. No, no. Nope. Fa no, no. <laughs> favorite musical group or artist? My favorite artist is Tupac. Nice. Nice. Great choice. Great choice. Favorite holiday? 
Hmm. Favorite holiday? Hmm. I'm going to go with Labor Day since I'm a union guy. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Labor Day. <laughs> nice. I like it. I like it. Well, awesome. That is the end of rapid questions there. and uh, That wasn't I, so rapid. I had to think about a yeah. few. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we did our best at making them rapid and then of the, the, the offshoot of talking about Whataburger. But uh, I, I want to thank you for coming in and, and spending a few minutes with me on the podcast. Uh, uh, welcome to Wilmer. Enjoy the evening here. Enjoy the night of Stingers baseball. I will be there tonight with my family because um, I try to make every home uh, uh, home opener for sure uh, with them. So um, enjoy the night. Enjoy Stinger Baseball. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. Once again, another great guy, LaTroy Hawkins, super nice, pretty funny. We talked quite a bit before and after that interview um, just about the Twins and sports and other things. So another great guy, but uh, we will get right into the uh, Stinger Spotlight. It's time for the Stinger Spotlight. Brought to you by Anytime Fitness in Wilmer, Litchfield, and Marshall. All right, well, thank you for uh, joining me, Justin, today. Um, for, for those that don't know, um, you're Canadian. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm Canadian. <laughs> yeah. uh, played high school baseball for uh, Foothills Composite High School. Uh, it feels composite. High composite. School. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I didn't. Same spelling. <laughs> different. <laughs> different version of it. Um, and and I saw it was an uh, academy. So is it was it a private school? Uh, so Foothills Composite High School is just like a public school in my hometown of Okotoks. But uh, in Canada, we don't really have like high school baseball. Okay. So if you wanted to play baseball, you'd have to join an academy, which is like no relation to the school or anything like oh, that. Oh, okay. Yeah, so basically go to school and then right after school head towards uh, Okotoks Dogs Baseball Academy and that's where I'd be for oh, okay. two, three hours. Okay, okay, yeah, because when I was, like I said, when I was looking up things, I was I was confused with that because it was like, yeah. okay, that was something <laughs> separate and it was different and I was like, okay, well, that, uh, thank you for <laughs> straightening yeah, no that out. It no makes problem. It makes a lot of sense. Well, um, and, and that was in the town of, I'm, I'm going to butcher it. <laughs> So I'll have you say it. All right. Uh, Okotoks, Alberta, Canada. Okotoks? Okotoks, Okay, yes. okay. Okotoks, which is uh, just uh, just south of Calgary. Yes. So, uh, you know, yeah. And you actually, it, the, the the academy, the dogs, they are uh, pretty dominant uh, team. Uh, four straight league championships mm-hmm. when yeah. you were playing. Yeah. Uh, let's see. For college summer, they're usually always in the play because they have the exact same thing as like the Wilmer Stingers does oh, is, okay. uh, the Western Canadian Baseball League and uh, I think they've had 16 years straight of being in the playoffs and of those 16 I think they also got uh, four championships as well nice so uh, it's not just uh, high school and everything it's a uh, collegiate as well nice 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 you know so that's 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 great to hear. That's and you know what what is the baseball? I mean, you just you said earlier about how you know there's not traditional high school baseball teams. What is the baseball culture up in Canada? Because obviously, you know, you guys just got the Blue Jays technically now <laughs> yeah. you know, for major league. So, what is the atmosphere like for baseball up in Canada? Uh, in a lot of areas in Canada, you know, it's more hockey than anything. Yeah. But uh, Okotoks, it actually the culture's really changed. Um, it used to be a big hockey town with uh, the Okotoks Oilers, which is like uh, our junior hockey league. Mm-hmm. But uh, ever since the the dogs came, I think it was I don't know, maybe eleven or twelve years ago. Uh, it's definitely become more of a, a baseball town. That's for sure. They uh, they definitely get uh, really good crowds at uh, their baseball games and everything like that. And with uh, having a lot of people actually come to Okotoks just to play for the dogs, it's. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely changed a lot. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah, no, I saw a picture of the stadium, and it was it was a full stadium. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's larger than the Stinger Stadium here. Yes. I mean, it was it was player it was stands all the way down the the fall side, and mm-hmm. they were packed. And so I was like, wow, that's that's a, that's <laughs> that's a pretty nice field. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was quite impressed with that. You know, so well after high school, uh, you ended up going to Indian Hills Community College in Iowa. Yes. Um, uh, were they one of the, how, did you have multiple team or multiple colleges reach out to you to come play for them or did just Iowa or why did you choose Iowa? Uh, so actually out of high school, I think it was maybe grade 10. I, uh, had a, a verbal commitment to, uh, play at Northern Kentucky university. Oh, okay. Uh, 
but I didn't think it was probably going to be like the greatest fit for me. Mm -hmm. So uh, I kind of reached out to my coaches for high school and uh, just wanted to know what other options I could have. And uh, I think it was maybe two, three days later of asking them, it was just a whole bunch of schools just calling me out of nowhere. And I'm not having a single clue where they're from, (laughs) what team they are, where exactly they are. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, there were a lot of options other than, uh, Indian Hills, but, uh, I knew a couple of people that were actually going to be going to that school oh, okay. as well. So I think that kind of helped make my decision a little okay. bit easier. Nice. Nice. Well, I mean, you had in 2018 season with them, you had a killer season at the plate batting 316, 13 home runs, 60 RBIs, seven mm-hmm. triples. I mean, you don't, you don't come across as a fast guy, <laughs> but, uh, but you had a great season, and that obviously is the reason that uh, the University of Alabama had to have seen that season, and they got a hold of you, right? Did they? Did you have any other colleges, or did just Alabama come at you? Uh, yeah, there were there were actually quite a few, um, but uh, it actually had nothing to do with my sophomore season at all. Uh, we have a there was a scout that's with the Colorado Rockies. He's a um, I I've been told that he's like more up there for. Uh, pitching scouting Mm -hmm. uh and uh with the coach at uh alabama uh, our hitting coach uh jerry zoli he uh his brother is also a scout with the colorado rockies and so basically during my freshman year the uh the scout that actually lives in centerville iowa which is Mm -hmm. uh where our school is at uh he would always come to some of our practices and some of our games and just kind of you know check out what kind of talent that we have on the team and I guess he noticed me the most and wanted to get in contact with uh, Zoli, and that's kind of how that all uh, went down. Okay, okay, awesome. Well, well, from uh, Alberta, Canada, to Iowa, to University of Alabama, yeah. you're slowly <laughs> waking your way more and more south. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, what What do you enjoy most about playing for, for Alabama? Uh, I think it's definitely a big culture shock, honestly. Yeah, being uh, in Canada and seeing all like the universities in Canada, it's it's unbelievably different. Yep, I, I've never seen any like sororities or fraternities mm. or like just a huge campus atmosphere, uh, because uh, in Canada, uh, the the only re- university that I've actually been on campus and seen was the University of Calgary and. It's uh, in a big city, so it's really constricted and mm. really clumpy. But then when you go down to Alabama, everything is just so spread out. And yeah. everybody has just room to do whatever they want, honestly. Uh, but with playing with them, it's definitely, uh, I guess, the culture. Everybody, I mean, roll tide all the time. Yeah. Every, yeah. every single second you're hearing that. And uh, it just kind of makes you feel like everybody's together, I guess, yeah. uh, even when... Uh, just uh, anybody's just coming for one game. You just feel like a part of it. Nice. Nice. Yeah, no, uh, obviously <laughs> Alabama's more known for football. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, obviously baseball's making its mark too, so that's awesome, you know. And, and uh, obviously then you ended up uh, having the opportunity to come up here and play uh, f- for the Wilmer Stingers. You know, how did how did you, how did they, how'd you find out that the Stingers were interested in you? Because, I mean, there's like four or five guys from Alabama mm-hmm. on the team where they just kind of – kind of got in there and then they just started picking you guys out <laughs> type uh, of thing? To be honest, I, I I don't know if I was the first one that was told that I was going to be coming to Wilmer, Minnesota to play with the, the Stingers, but basically all it was was we were just at a practice and then I think right after practice I saw a text from, uh, I think it was Voss, saying we're really excited to have you uh, join the Stingers and I was like, I'm not. I'm not too sure what exactly this is, <laughs> and uh, and then finally, Coach Lily uh, talked to me about uh, the Wilmer Stingers. Like, oh, okay, this makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Uh, so I guess uh, Voss might have jumped the gun a little yeah. bit, but uh, <laughs> that doesn't sound like right at all. <laughs> he's, he's a very low key, not very excited person. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot! Well, that's awesome, you know. Um, you know, and well, in, in, once again, you've had a overall solid season up here, batting so far 277, leading the team with five home runs, leading the team with 21 RBIs. You know, what what do you say? What would you say has led to your success so far this season up here with the Stingers? Uh, really, just being aggressive at the plate. I knew uh, coming in, I'd have to work on a couple things with uh, like my whole mentality of being in the box and being ready to hit. And uh, I guess I just kind of 
really grasped on to it, uh, it pretty quickly. And uh, I'm just glad that it's been working out pretty well. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, no, that's that's great. Uh, we appreciate you coming up here. You know, so far, how do you enjoy playing up here in Wilmer? It's a lot of fun. I, I love the Stinger Nation, the the whole Welcome to the Hive. I love yep. that atmosphere. Yep. Every, everybody's having a good time, especially uh, having the best mascot in the league, <laughs> Barry. <laughs> yes, Barry is. He is. He's been solid since he's come in. <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah, yeah he's a character. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, just before we get to the. Uh, uh, the rapid questions are, who is your host family up here? Uh, Brant and Amanda Lager. Okay. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. That's a, that's, a, that's a good program, how they do that with the, uh, with the families and hooking yeah, them up with Yeah, that. definitely. And awesome. So um, that was the, uh, the quick background questions. Now we'll just kind of get the get-to-know-you questions here. Um, go ahead and answer them as quickly as you can. If uh, you got to think for a little bit, go ahead. If we go on a side tangent, it happens. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, uh, we'll start off with favorite color. Favorite color, I, I got to go with orange. Orange, all right. Favorite MLB club? Cincinnati Reds. Cincinnati Reds. Cincinnati okay. Reds. Any, why? Uh, the Big Red Machine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was going to say, from <laughs> where you're located. Big and, fan of that. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Um, favorite thing to do in your downtime? Oh, uh, well, right now during the summer, it's been school, but uh, I like to... Uh, go fishing every now and then okay. and sometimes just hang out with uh, the kids that they have actually they got nice. four kids uh, that oh, i'm wow. living with right nice. now nice 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 um one thing you can't live without Ooh, probably uh batting gloves batting, batting gloves. gloves need those yeah <laughs> uh favorite all-time baseball player Ooh. I got to go with uh, Joey Votto. Stick with the Cincinnati Reds. <laughs> That's my guy. There you go. Uh, the one food you can never get sick of. Chicken. Chicken. Chicken, yeah. That's what Clanch said about an hour and a half ago. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite TV show of all time? Ooh. Uh, I'm a really big fan of House, the, uh, mm. the doctor show. Yes. That's a really good one. Yeah, that was a good one. Yep. No, for sure. Favorite movie of all time? V for Vendetta or Ratatouille. Ratatouille for kids, ah, nice. V for Vendetta if we're talking more adult, I guess, yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah, No, I, I, don't, I don't think I ever watched V for Vendetta. Really good but movie. I, but I really did enjoy Ratatouille. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, is, that, that is a very good movie. Um, if, let's see, if, if, if baseball isn't into your future, what would you, be, what would you want to do with your career? Uh, I kind of want to get into the whole banking scene of being like a financial planner. Okay. So like whenever you, you feel like retiring, yeah. you know, just call me and there I'll, go. I'll, I'll try and set it up for you. Yeah, <laughs> Nice. Nice. Yeah. No, that's, that's definitely a job that's, uh, in need and will always be there for people. So mm-hmm. that's a good one to get into. All right. We're going to a couple quick ones here. Ford or Chevy? Ooh, Ford. PlayStation or Xbox? PlayStation. Burger King or McDonald's? Ooh. Uh, I got to go with Burger King. There you go. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Smell you hate the most? Uh, probably the smell of pickle juice. Pickle juice? Yeah, I'm not. Mm. A, I hate pickles. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new one, pickle juice. <laughs> okay, okay. Just that salty brine. Yeah, vinegary ish yeah, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Smell you love the most? Ooh, barbecue. Barbecue. Nice. Superhero power you'd want? Uh, I'd probably go Hulk strength. There we go. Yeah. There you go. Favorite musical group or artist or both? Ooh, I've been really, I've been getting really into the journey mm. and a little bit of Molly Crew ever since I watched uh, the Dirt, the movie that was on Netflix. Oh, okay, I don't really, think it's... really good movie. Kind of got into Molly Crew a little bit nice. once I watched that. <laughs> nice, nice. So some of the old classics. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And uh, last but not least, favorite holiday. Oh, Christmas. 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 That's when I get to go home. <laughs> there you go. There you go. See the family and everything. Exactly. Great great answer. Well, well, that ends uh, the uh, the questions there, Justin. Uh, thank you for coming in. 
Um, good luck the rest of the season. Good luck the rest of your time at Alabama. And uh, good luck in just life in general. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks Thank for, you for having me. Yes, thanks, man. All right, and that was the Stinger Spotlight for the week. Uh, great kid. Uh, great things in his future. I could see it coming. So I want to thank you all for uh, tuning in to this week. Uh, episode of the interviews and we'll be back next week with a normal show talking twins and all that fun stuff so thank you all for listening subscribe thumbs up all that fun stuff see you next week